All right, guys, this is Mark Franks from PlentyOfGadgets.com. Uh, today this is going to be part two of the HWT550 soundbar, uh, and let's get started. So, guys, I didn't want to take this off the wall because I already hit the cables and everything. But what it came with, I forgot, I forgot to tell you guys in the last video, it came with two brackets in the back, and it came with a sample sheet where you can put that sheet on the wall, and you can go ahead and drill your holes in. And what you do is you'll put the brackets on those holes and it looks it just looks pretty good the installation is it's a breeze it's simple and it's it's fast let me show you how it looks like at a distance here and i have a 65 inch samsung q70 tv and i went ahead and, and put my sound bar about an inch and a half underneath so that's what it looks like uh, my wife has a bunch of things up here but it looks an inch and a half underneath so it came with a an optical cable uh, but I didn't use an optical cable. I went ahead and went, uh, uh, used uh, an HDMI, HDMI for the HDMI arc port in the back, so I can just basically control everything with one controller. You know, if, if uh, I don't want to have to plug in everything, I don't want to plug in my. I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't want to have to use a controller for my for my um, Xbox Blu-ray player or set-top box or anything like that. So I wanted I wanted to control everything with one controller, and HDMI arc gives you that advantage. Uh, over just using a regular optical cable or a regular HDMI cable. So I went with HDMI ARC. If your TV is compatible with HDMI ARC, by all means, just use a regular HDMI cable and you put in the ARC, ARC button input on your soundbar and put the other end in the ARC input in the back of your TV. So that's that worked out well for me. So let's take another look at it here. And that's pretty much how it looks. Now for the subwoofer, Let's take a look at the subwoofer here and I have the back of it. Now, if the blue light is solid blue, that means the subwoofer has synced with the soundbar. Now, this is a wireless subwoofer, so uh, it has to sync with your soundboard. So uh, soundbar, I'm sorry. So if you have your, so basically what you do is you go ahead and plug it in here and then you plug the other end into the wall. And what it'll do is it should automatically connect to your soundbar nine times out of ten it should automatically connect to your soundbar now if it doesn't for some reason it's not connecting uh, the red uh, the, the, the light is red or it's blinking and it's not solid blue then you're gonna have to manually connect it and manually connecting is pretty easy uh, what you do is well first of all you want to make sure your soundbar is turned off and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the soundbar off to simulate it not syncing but before you uh, do this procedure, before you set it up manually, always make sure your soundbar is turned off. After you do the procedure, it will turn on automatically. So let's go ahead and turn the soundbar off to simulate uh, that the subwoofer is not synced to the soundbar. All right, I have a red light here. And what you do is you'll see a button down here that says ID set. So you hold this button down for five seconds until the blue light blinks. So one, two, three, four, five, and it starts blinking. Next, what you do is you're on your controller. Let me focus this in here. You'll hold the up button on your controller for five seconds. And then you'll see ID set on on your soundbar. And now if I look back at the subwoofer, it should stop blinking. Now you'll see a solid blue. Now your subwoofer is synced, uh, is synced to your soundbar. And both soundbar, I mean both subwoofer and soundbar turned on. Okay. Now, and just for a quick recap, to do that, you just hold the ID set button on your subwoofer down for five seconds, and then grab your remote control, hold the up button on your remote control for five seconds, and then your uh, your soundbar will automatically turn on, and then you should see ID set, and then you'll see on, and then about another five seconds, you'll see that blinking light on your subwoofer turn solid. That means you successfully synced your subwoofer up manually. All right, so this subwoofer is about 14 inches vertically and about 18, I'm sorry, eight inches horizontally. So that's a great size. It's not too tall and it's not too wide. All right, so that's the subwoofer and how to connect it. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the remote control. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go over this remote control. Guys, it's pretty seamless. Uh, 
all of Samsung's remote controls are pretty intuitive, in my opinion. But you have your power button here. You have your, this button right here is your source button. So if you want to uh, pick between USB, uh, digital uh, optical in, your arc cable, all right, Bluetooth, you you hit the source button. So this is just going to different connections that are in the back of your soundbar to your TV. This here is the power button. If you can't see, this is your power button. This is your Bluetooth. So you hit this button and then it'll automatically start. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it'll start searching for Bluetooth and you'll be able to connect it uh, on your phone. And I'll show you guys how to do that. This is your up, your left, right, down. And this is your pause button. This is the mute button. This is the sound mode. This is the switch between standard, smart, uh, the um, the surround sound simulation, virtual X. So, and there's a, uh, I think there's a couple more, but this is just a switch between them. And we'll go over that a little bit later. Now, this is your uh, settings button here. This is to change your bass, your treble, and to change the auto sync frequency. This is your volume up, volume down, subwoofer up, subwoofer down. And as far as just the uh, physical buttons, that's pretty much it. And let's get into a little bit more depth into what they do. All right, so now let's see what each of these buttons can do. All right, so just like I said before, this is gonna be the source button. Let's take a look at, and see what it looks like on the sound bar. All right, so let me go ahead and hit the source button. And that's my first input in the back of the TV. That's my arc cable. So I do have that connected. So let's hit, let's hit it again. This is the HDMI um, input. I don't have anything in the HDMI input right now. So let's go to the next one. This is Bluetooth. So I don't have anything going with Bluetooth. It's just going to this, this going through the next source. But it says Bluetooth ready if I want to get that done. And this is the USB. Guys, if you have songs on the USB, you can go ahead and put it in the back. I don't really know the format. I have to check that out, but you can check it out in your manual. But go ahead and put it in the back and you can listen to music. So that's pretty much it. The digital in, HDMI, Bluetooth, and USB. So that when you hit the source button, you're just going through the different sources in the back of your soundbar. All right, guys, so let me go ahead and show you how to set up your Bluetooth. It's actually uh, pretty simple. So what you do is you hit the, the Bluetooth pairing button here. So you go and hit this button. And then you'll see on your sound bar, it'll say BT pairing. So that's just an indicator that's in pairing mode. So now what I do is I go ahead and check my phone out, go to settings on your phone. Guys, let's see, you guys see this. And you'll see, you, you'll see where it says AV Samsung soundbar. And I go and click this right now. It says not connected. I'll click it. And now at the top, it says connected. Now, if you want to play, you know, uh, your songs on YouTube or any other streaming or music app, it'll play through your soundbar. So guys, it's, it's, that's pretty much it. It's basically that simple. All right, guys. So let's take a closer look at these three buttons down here. Now, the, this right here is pretty self-explanatory. You got your pause, left, right, up, down, like I stated before. But the three buttons down here. So this is going to be your mute button. So if you hit this, you'll see mute on your sound bar. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to show you guys that because it's just a mute button. Now, what things get interesting is the sound mode. So let's go over what each uh, button does on the sound mode. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this button here and show you what, it, what you see. All right, so I'm going to hit sound mode. Right now it says it's on Bluetooth, so let's go ahead and change that. Now this is going to be the DT, uh, what it says, DT Virtual X. So this is going to be that. This is going to be your um, your surround sound. So it, it basically simulates the 5.1 surround sound. And I find this to be the best mode. I always usually keep it on this because it just simulates the 5.1 mode and it does it pretty well. So this is my best mode. Now, if you go, let's hit it again. This is the standard mode. So this is just going to be your standard. This is the surround sound mode. This mode is okay, but I, I think the uh, Virtual X is still better. 
this is the game mode guys if you're playing your xbox or ps5 or any other uh gaming system uh this mode will be the best to play it and here's the smart mode this is just basically what it is is it kind of just takes a look at the the uh the film or the video that you're watching and it automatically automatically looks at uh changes to the best settings now my wife likes the smart mode the best she likes the smart mode i like the virtual x mode but uh, your best bet is probably either going to be the smart mode because the, the system automatically just gathers the information and, and sets the best possible audio uh, audio sound or the virtual x mode so that's that's what we both like either the smart mode or the virtual x and that's pretty much it so we have your smart mode you have your dts mode you have your standard you have your surround sound and you have your game mode all right I would recommend either uh, placing it on your smart mode and let the system do it itself or using the virtual X uh, 5.1 auto simulation mode. All right. So let's look at this here. Let me back up here and we're going to let's let it focus here. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and look at this button here and this is going to be your settings button. So let's go ahead and press that. Let me, let me show you what it does here. So if I hit the settings button, you're gonna see you have your treble, and you can and you can go up and down with the uh, with the joystick up or down. I keep mine at zero, and you have your bass button, and you can go up or down. And I keep mine at plus six. Plus six is gonna be the highest, and the lowest is going to be negative six. So it's either plus six or negative six. I keep mine at plus six. If you hit it again. You have your audio, this is called audio sync. Yes, audio sync mode. So if your if your um if the voice is not lining up with the audio, I'm sorry, the video not lining up with the audio, you can go to this mode and press the up button and change your frequencies. So it won't it, it doesn't look like an old Chinese video where where they're saying something and you hear them like five seconds later. So um so if you have an audio sync issues, go ahead and, and go to audio sync mode, hit the audio sync, and then you can change the different frequencies so you can get that uh, synchronized. All right, so that's pretty much it. And then you have your, you have your volume. Let me make sure we get this. I have a hard time. All right, so now you have your vo now you have your volume and your subwoofer, and that's pretty much it. And this uh, remote control comes with two AA batteries. Let me take this out here, put this down and see. All right, so this uh, remote control comes with two AA batteries. So and it, so that's that's that. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's the remote control. All right, guys. So I want to show you a sample of what each sound mode sounds like. So I have a video from YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it. So the first clip is gonna be without the sound mode. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Now, you may not hear the the actual sound differences. Let me know because, you know, I have the, the road mic here and you have the YouTube conversion. So I'm, I'm not sure if you actually hear it precisely or the different sound modes. So just let me know. But this is let's go ahead and turn it on. This is without the sound bar on just the TV, the Samsung Q70 TV. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the sound bar on and the first mode is gonna be standard mode. All right, so this is what it on. Now I can already tell the difference between no sound bar and the sound bar on, so a lot different.
Go ahead and line it up for you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and switch modes. I'm gonna switch it to surround sound mode. Let's go ahead and back it up a little bit. All right, guys, so this is surround sound mode. Now, as I can tell, it's, it's already a, uh, a lot more immersive. Uh, it's surround sound. It's not quite like a 5.1 surround sound, but it's, it's definitely there. It's, it's like you're watching a movie. So definitely louder and more immersive than the uh, standard mode. All right, let's go ahead and switch modes. Let's go to the game mode. Next, let's back it up a little bit. All right. So this is game mode. Now what I've noticed from game mode, it plays louder up front. It doesn't really have the surround sound, but you know, game mode is optimized for games. So if you, got, if you have a PlayStation or Xbox and you want to play it, I would, I would recommend switching it to this mode. Or if you just want to play game mode for everything, you can do that. It's actually pretty loud up front, but it doesn't really have that surround sound feel in there. All right, let's go ahead and switch modes. All right, so this is going to be the smart mode. This is the, the system's gonna figure out what's the best way to play the music that it hears through the, the sound bar. I would recommend this mode as your default mode. Just let the system think for you. Let's go ahead and see how it sounds. It has a rich sound coming from it. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it, but I can definitely hear it. And I wouldn't lie to you guys. It's not quite 5.1, but it's almost getting there. A little bit similar to surround sound. And I would just let the system do what it needs to do. And my wife and I really like this mode. I like the Virtual X mode, the next mode. My wife likes this mode, the smart mode. All right, let's go ahead and change it. Now this next mode is the DTS Virtual X mode. It simulates the surround sound mode. This is my favorite mode. I usually keep it on this. Uh, let's go ahead and see how it sounds. Now, now I have to speak up a little bit louder because it's louder, but it has rich sounds. It gives you that 5.1 feeling like you actually have a 5.1 channel surround sound in here. Uh, it just fills the room. I love it. This is the mode um, that I like to use. And then all this sound is coming from a 330 watt smaller uh, sound bar. I'm not sure if you guys can tell the sound differences, but I can definitely tell the sound differences and this is the mode to be in. So. Not bad sound bar for the price. All right, guys, so these are the different sound modes. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, guys, so that's the HW550. I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, so the HW550 is, is in the middle. You have the 450, you have the 550, and then you have the 650. Now the differences are, I believe the 450 has about 200 watts of power, and you step it on up to the 550, which is 320 watts. It comes with an HDMI input for audio, and it comes with that extra HDMI arc for uh, to control your volume, all your volume, everything from one remote control. And then you go to, you step up to the 650, 
Now the 650 has a centerpiece, so you so it, it does have a uh, 5.1. Now the 4. Point, the 450 and the 550 are 2.1 channels, but with the Virtual X mode on the 550, it simulates 5.1 pretty well. So I would definitely snag that for $247. You really can't beat that. That's a that's good that's a good value for that soundbar. Now there's a newer model out right now, and I believe it's about $277. Uh, I think it's uh 2021 model you guys want to snag that i'll leave all the links below guys uh, that's all i have for you today mark franks from cleanupgadgets.com catch you in the next one